Hi, my name's Dan Lewis. Uh, I live on the west coast of the island in uh, Tofino, in Tlaoquayat First Nations Territory, and it's an honor to be here today in the Coast Salish Territories. Um, I run an organization with my partner, Bonnie Glambeck, who's uh, down there, uh, called Clackwood Action, and we focus on uh, salmon farms. And in the last couple of years, by the way, I'm not going to show a movie, I'm just going to talk with some pictures. Um, you know, it's becoming more and more apparent. Actually, can we pull up the first slide? Yeah. That, you know, when we talk about salmon farms, we need to kind of reframe how we think about salmon farms. Because salmon farms are also herring farms. You want to skip ahead? There are a lot of herring inside of salmon farms. Because the nets, they're open net pens. And the nets are have a big enough mesh that a, a tiny, like a juvenile herring, can swim right into the fish farm. There's a, a number of reasons why they might be attracted to fish farms, lights, uh, the feed pellets, and shelter from predators. Um, the fish, when they get in there, can sometimes grow to such a size that they're not able to escape. And so, uh, you know, salmon farms are full of herring. So the um, government does, you know, monitor what they call bycatch in salmon farms. They do look at other fish that are caught. And what this is just showing us here, this is from a report done by the Watershed Watch Society about a year ago, um, that you know 71% of the fish they're finding in the salmon farms are herring. So they only uh, count and monitor uh, bycatch in fish farms when they're harvesting, when they're transferring the fish from farm to farm or from pen to pen within a farm, or when they are um, removing the nets. Other than that, they're not required to monitor uh, bycatch. So these farms can be quite full of herring. So this uh, it just shows over the years that the reported bycatch in salmon farms is increasing. So it's one of those things where we don't know, does that mean that there is more bycatch or that they're getting better at reporting it? But you can see in 2012, a, a huge spike in the amount of bycatch in the salmon farms in BC. And so that actually was an occurrence that happened in Clackwood Sound, where we live. Uh, there was a fish farm that got a, a virus called IHNV. And so the government ordered all the fish in that farm to be culled. They had to catch every single fish, not just the salmon. They didn't want to let anything escape that might be carrying this virus. And so one farm uh, near Tofino, the Dixon Bay farm, had 348,000 herring in it when they harvested the salmon. And the other one, Miller Channel, had, um, I think it was less than 100,000, but still, you know, tens of thousands of herring in the farm. Okay, we got a little video next. Cameras here, they're making you famous right now. They're my friends. They're trying to protect our ocean waters here. Where you're standing, you're trespassing in my territorial waters. I'm gonna check if any of our baby fish are in there whatsoever, then I'm gone. It's thick, you can't see through it down there. There's a huge, huge school of them. They're hairy. Look at that. That's horrible. Well, I see? just saw a big one. It sure looked like it was chasing. Oh yeah, I seen them chasing them there. They're chasing after them. The big fish are chasing after the baby fish. Oh my god, this that's that's a lot. I've been focused on the spread of disease and the waste that goes through the nets into the out, outside. It never occurred to me until very recently the amount that's coming in from the wild 
uh, species of herring in huge quantities there. I was really shocked and, you know, that's all feed for the wild salmon. Trudeau and uh, Horgan, they got to put a stop to this. So members of Tlaokwayot First Nations uh, joined or boarded the farms and they put GoPros into the pens and every pen that they put uh, the cameras into, they saw herring down there. So, you know, the whole idea of, of night lights, these lights are used to increase the grow rate of the uh, salmon in the farms and they use them mainly in the winter through the winter months. This is a quote from a website of a company that provides uh, lights to salmon farm companies. And they actually admit that uh, these uh, lights will attract the small fish, providing a free food source and reduce the operating costs of the salmon farms. And, you know, we have to remember that all these salmon farms that were plunked down on the BC coast about 30, 30 years ago, they went into habitat that was used before that by fish like herring to rear and to live. So, you know, these fish farms are right uh, on the migration routes of wild salmon and they're also in herring habitat. And there's no question that the uh, farm salmon are eating the herring and reducing costs for the, uh, for the uh, companies. So uh, in the last year, during the International Year of Salmon, our organization, Clackwood Action, we had a little uh, program called Clackwood, uh, sorry, yeah, Clackwood Salmon Investigation, uh, CSI. And so we go to salmon farms and just monitor the impacts that they're having on the environment. And so we did a project called Going Viral, where we used a, a method that had been developed by um, Alexander Martin, where we, because they're open net pens, all kinds of stuff flows out of the pens. So we would just get up close to the pens and using an aquarium net, scoop out bits of tissue and fat and feces and blobs of fat and stuff. And we sent it off to a lab uh, at the Atlantic Veterinary College, one of the world's leading salmon virologist, Dr. Fred Kabenge, would do the sample testing for us. And uh, this is what we found. Uh, Cermak is a Norwegian-owned company that's owned by Mitsubishi. And um, all but one of their farms tested positive for PRV1A, which is the Norwegian variant of PRV. And the Creative Salmon, who are sort of in Tofino held to be a better company, um, tested 100% positive. Creative is actually rearing Pacific Salmon Chinook, which is uh, actually in many ways much worse than rearing Atlantics. So, uh, you know, a, a fish farm that's infected with the virus can shed 65 billion viral particles per hour. And of course, all those viral particles flush around with currents and the wind and the waves. And because fish breathe through their, by passing water over their gills, these viral particles in the water can be passed over the gills and boom, you have viruses going right into the blood. So it's dead easy for wild fish to pick up viruses from fish farms. And if we need to understand that mechanism that they're shedding 65 billion viral particles per hour. So the potential for these viruses to be affecting, you know, herring and other fish is very real. And they have found, uh, there have been wild herring tested positive for PRV, for this Norwegian virus. So um, there's probably been very little study done on that, but there's a very great risk that these Norwegian introduced viruses from the Atlantic Ocean could be spreading into wild herring populations in the Pacific. So this photo was taken a couple of years ago in Hot Springs Cove, just north of Tofino. And obviously that's a herring. And so, you know, when we talk about sea lice, it's important to understand that there are two different kinds of sea lice. So we talk about salmon lice and we talk about herring lice. And so these are herring lice. And, uh, you know, salmon lice tend to find a host and stick with it, whereas herring lice will move from host to host. And so um, sea lice themselves cannot become infected with PRV, but they can carry it in their GI tract and on their ex extremities. And so they can be a vector for transferring viruses from the fish farms to wild fish. 
So uh, there were tens of thousands of these little herring that washed up dead in Hot Springs Cove, covered in lice. Mm -hmm. And it looks like uh, the cause of death was uh, a virus, a virus which is, you know, norm, sort of normal in uh, in wild herring. But you got to remember that when you crowd that many animals into a confined space, the viruses start to really spread amongst the population, and they also can breed and mutate and become more virulent. We've seen that happen in Norway. So, you know, I just want to wrap up by saying, you know, I have a friend in, in Tofino uh, from the uh, Tla'okwiat First Nation. His name is Tutakwisnupchip. He's also known as Joe Martin. He's a very well-known uh, canoe carver. Joe's late brother, Billy, worked in the fish plant, in the, in the fish farm plant. And, uh, you know, Billy would continually be telling Joe every night when we're, they bring in the, the salmon to process, there's a toad, a, you know, a huge fish toad of herring bycatch every night. And I, I really didn't quite get the significance of that. I kind of thought, well, that's the least of our worries. We've got all these other problems with fish farming. But, you know, when you start thinking of all these things in combination, um, I think we need to really rethink when we're talking about, you know, salmon farms, be thinking of them as herring farms as well. And, you know, all of the, you know, the Nunchanov have a saying, as Gore Johns was mentioning today, Hishakish Sawa, which means everything is one, everything is connected. Or it can also be said, Hishak Nish Tsawa, we are all one, we are all connected. And, um, you know, like we're very focused on salmon farms, but we're not going to be able to save wild salmon on the West Coast if they don't have herring to eat. And so it's all connected and we need to keep remember that all these, uh, these different challenges are linked together. And I also just want to say, um, it's amazing to be here. I'm stoked for the weekend. And, um, you know, I've been doing this kind of work for a while, for about 30 years. And one thing I know is that people power works. We, we proved that in, in Clackwood Sound back in the early 90s. And, uh, you know, I'm sure many of you were involved. Was anybody here back in Clackwood back in the day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the words of um, one of my favorite folk singers, Utah Phillips, direct action always gets the goods. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.